Welcome to another virtual Nothing But The Word message presented by Pastor Dr. Gerald Parker Sr. being brought to you from Pilgrim Progress Missionary Baptist Church Ministries located at 1301 Magnolia Street in North Little Rock, Arkansas. We encourage you to follow our motto where we say, let's do it God's way. The scripture tells us that life is in the blood. Okay. So if life is in the blood, which it is, when Jesus shed his blood on Calvary, yes. uh -huh. Thank you, Jesus. he was giving up his life. Amen. When we talk about the blood of Jesus, we're talking about that he died yes. in our place. Thank you. Thank you. Shed his precious blood and died. Paid the price. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. On Calvary. Yes, sir. And guess what happened? He was buried. Yes, he was. But on the third day, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He rose. Yes, sir. And that and that's why we're here. Yes, sir. Because of the good news of Jesus Christ. Yes, sir. Don't answer it out loud. But are you ashamed of Jesus Christ? All right, all right. That's what I'm asking. I'm asking you. Yeah, you. Are you ashamed of Jesus Christ? Okay. And we're going to go to Mark, the 8th chapter, verse 38. These are the words of Jesus Christ. And Mark 8, 38 says this. Whosoever, therefore, shall be ashamed of me uh -huh. and my words... In this adulterous and sinful generation of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he cometh in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. All right. Are you ashamed of Jesus? Have you ever been ashamed of anything? I was talking to a, a young lady just this week who said that she was expecting company to come to see her. And because of a certain situation at the house, she was ashamed to bring him to the house. All right, all right. I remember so vividly when I was playing football at Sitco Africana Jones High School. I, I played quarterback. I might not, I might not look like a quarterback now. I look, look more like a uh, a god right now. But I played quarterback, and in practice, we were practicing for Monroe, Louisiana, and I remember so vividly, we were scrimmaging, and then I did not put my mouth guard, mouthpiece in my mouth, and we were scrimmaging, and so I did a fake, and I went back to pass, and the defensive end, I know his name, he's dead now, he came in, and elbowed me in my mouth and next thing I knew I was on the ground spitting out dirt we used to practice over there at Sherman Park and I felt and two of my teeth were so loose until I touched them and they fell I went to Dr. Jewell the next day and he fitted me for some false teeth so for about two months I walked around in school with my teeth out. 
And I was so ashamed of no, of no teeth in my mouth that every time I'd talk, I would hide my mouth while I was talking. Yes. Because I was afraid that if they saw, they, everybody knew I got my teeth knocked out, but for, for just to see it, I was so ashamed until I hid my mouth so that no one could humiliate me or say things that would criticize me. When you are ashamed, you, are, you stop doing what you know you ought to do because you fear either humiliation, hurt, or harm. Right, right. Uh -huh. yes, when you are ashamed, you don't want to associate with the particular individual or particular situation because it'll make you look a certain way. And I've come all the way from, 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 from Sherwood, Arkansas, on my way to heaven, to let you know that just as we become shame of our parents, shame of this, and I do remember another thing, I used to have this old car, and, uh, and I didn't know until I was grown, this old car, that some of my children, Gerald, I don't think you were part of that, but Jarita and the rest of them. Yeah, they were, not me. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, was take, I was taking them to school, and I was wondering why that when I went up to the school, they would be dropping their head down like that. Because they were ashamed, Deacon Hudson, because they didn't want people to see them get out of this raggedy cop. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. See, when you are ashamed, you don't want to associate with a particular situation or a particular person. So the question I want to ask you today in this day and time, as I cut this sermon short, are you ashamed of Jesus? Mm. All right. It's possible. Because in this scripture today, in Mark the eighth chapter, verse 38, we're going to look at it just for a minute, then we're going to be through because we've got to do the Lord's Supper. And I notice in Mark 8 and 38, he talks about the world that we live in. He says, in this adulterous and sinful generation. Let me stop right there. And the point I want to tell everybody here that we're, we're living in an age where it's hard to be proud of Jesus. Talk. Because we live in a world of adultery and sin. And that word adultery means this world does not love God. This world does not love Jesus Christ. Yeah. Right. And this world is full of sin. And everywhere you go, people are not concerned about the Bible. They're not concerned about Jesus. They're not concerned about God. And now since we are saved, full of the Holy Ghost, it's a challenge for us to mention the name of Jesus because when you mention the name of Jesus, you might be humiliated, you might be talked about, you might be ostracized, you might be ignored. And so what we do as Christians, it's possible for a child of God to be shame of Jesus. All right, all right. How can you tell? Well, I can tell when you don't want to put a Bible on your desk because you're afraid somebody will think that you are a follower of Christ. Another example of being shamed of Jesus is that when you are with your friends who do not know Jesus, you're very careful not to mention his name. I don't want to start nothing. I want them to still like me. So you don't mention Jesus. Or Another example of being ashamed of Jesus is when someone says something that's not true according to the word of God because uh, you're ashamed, because you're afraid that you might be humiliated, you keep your mouth closed and allow them to say something about your Lord that's not true. Another example of being ashamed of Jesus as a child of God is that when you go for a job interview, you don't want them to know that you are a follower of Christ. 
you don't, you know, not unless they ask you, you might say, I go to church. But you don't want to mention the name Jesus because if you mention the name Jesus too hard or too long, they might not hire you. Or when you go out to a restaurant, the family's getting ready to eat. You're so shamed until you're not willing to hold hands and bow your head and pray out loud over the food because people might watch you and look at you. Mm. All right. Or when you're dating and meet this future boo, <laughs> you don't want him to know that you love Jesus. You let him curse. You let him do all he can do. Yes, sir. So you can get on his side, but you never mention that I love Jesus. Yes, sir. And if you're going to date me, you got to love him too. My, my, my. It's possible for a preacher to be around other preachers and afraid to mention Jesus because they're talking about something they shouldn't be talking about. Yes, sir. And so what I found out today is possible for a child of God to be shamed of Jesus. My, my, my. Are you ashamed of him? I don't see why. <laughs> Look what he did for you my, my, my. Oh, yeah. on Calvary. He was not too ashamed to come down here from heaven wrapped up in human flesh. He was not too ashamed to hang on the cross Naked. Many people don't know, but when people were being crucified, they were crucified naked. That's right. The picture, pictures that we see, we see uh, this picture of supposedly of Jesus with this napkin around his waist. But when, when men were crucified, they were crucified naked, and they carried their cross to, to Calvary. They carried their cross naked, but he was not too ashamed uh, to be crucified for you and me. He suffered humiliation. Yes. But he suffered humiliation for you and for me. And since he and not only that, he died for your sins and mine. And now are you telling me that you are ashamed to mention his name? Mm -hmm. I was so I was so elated when uh, of this inauguration of, uh, of, uh, of 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 Obama when he had this inauguration and Mrs. Edgar Metka Edwards, she gave the prayer at uh, his inauguration. All right, did y'all not know that this is wrong in a public scene to mention Jesus? You can, it's okay to say God. Have you ever noticed this? All the stars and all the, the politicians, they'll mention God. But you never hear them say, I love Jesus. And when she stood up there and prayed, she prayed a beautiful prayer. And at the end of that prayer, she said, in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. <laughs> On national TV. Yes, sir. Not ashamed of Jesus. Yes, sir. So in this text, help me, Lord, as we go through this. Jesus says... We live in, in this adulterous and sinful generation. Then he says this. Therefore. Everybody say therefore. therefore. It's right in the text. He says therefore. And the purpose for therefore. He was saying as a result of what I've already said. Here is the consequence. And what has he already said? He already had said that he was the Messiah. He had already declared in Mark the 8th chapter that he must go to Jerusalem, that he must suffer, and that he must die, and that he must rise on the third day. He also had declared that if you want to follow him, you got to first deny yourself, take up the cross, and follow him. He also had also declared that if you are living your life trying to gain the world, what's the use of gaining the world and lose your own soul? Then he said, uh, in the therefore, yes, that if you lose your soul, 
Is there anything in this world that you can exchange for your soul? If you gain the whole world, I mean the trees and the money and the power and all those things, all those things do not equal up to your soul. Make sure that your soul is right. Make sure that your soul is right with God. And then here in verse 38, he closes this thing out by saying this. Therefore, whosoever shall be ashamed of me and my words. He said, me. If you're ashamed of me. And, 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 and so it's possible to be ashamed of him and his word. You see, it's impossible to separate Jesus' words from him. Jesus is the word. And so when you are ashamed of his word, you're ashamed of him. If you're ashamed of him, you're ashamed of the word. And so this is why, as I stand up here this morning, I know what, I, I know what I'm fighting against. I'm, I'm fighting against TV. I'm fighting against uh, 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 television. I'm fighting against people are looking for excitement. They're looking for something I can feel good about. They're looking for something I get a big bang about. And when you just stand up and open up the Bible and preach the word, for the most part, people don't want to hear the naked word. And I'm going to tell you right now, I feel good. You know why? Because I'm standing behind the word of God. I, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I don't have nothing to fear. I don't have nothing to prove. And what I like about God's naked truth, God's naked truth don't need any clothes on it. I don't have to add to this. I don't have to add to this. All I want to say, you got to go by what Jesus has already said. I, I know what they're saying. I know what they're saying. They're saying this, you can love who you want. Uh, same sex message, but Jesus said, a man and a wife. Yes, Jesus said, a man and a woman. Somehow I said, well, we live in a day and time where you can love anybody you want to love. Okay, we live in that day and time, but guess what? It's not about what the world says. It's about what Jesus has already said. You can't, you can't be ashamed of what Jesus has already said. Guess what? What Jesus said stands. Thank God for his word. And he says this, if you're ashamed of me, and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation. And he says this, this is it y'all. Of him also shall the son of man be ashamed when he cometh in the glory of his father with the holy angels. Hold it I, 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 I had to get, I had to really look at that thing. Because here in the context in one way, I said, now hold on, now that first part, I understand that first part of that verse, he could be talking to Christians because sometimes we get this Peter simple, Peter complex. You see, some of y'all know in Matthew 26 and other gospel that there was a time that Jesus denied, that, 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 that Peter denied Jesus. They said, you one of those fellas? Yeah. No, I don't know him. Je he had been with Jesus for almost three years. But when the pressure came on him, he denied Jesus. But we, 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 we're not talking about that because sometimes all of us, one way or another, sometimes when the pressure hit, we might deny Jesus. We might say we're ashamed just for a minute. But guess what? That same Peter that said he denied Jesus in Matthew 26, when you go to Acts the second chapter, it's that same Peter that stood full of the Holy Ghost telling everybody about that Jesus rose and he died. And guess what? When he got through preaching, he was not ashamed to talk about Jesus Christ and 3,000 people were added to the church. But the shame that he's talking about here, he's talking about those people who reject the Lord, who hear the word, and who, who, who every day of their life, they're more concerned about what I can get, what I can have, and they, and they forget about Jesus. They reject him. They don't hear his word. We're talking about living a life of rejection to Jesus Christ. It happens that way sometimes. The people just, they hear the word, and they still reject it. And some people join the church. They join the church like some of you have. They join the church but never join Jesus. They join the church and they go to work and work two or three years 
And then he found out later that you call yourself in the church. You got to be careful as a follower of Christ. Where you go, who you run with, what you say, you can't just go to everything the world has to offer because you're representing Jesus Christ. You got to let your light shine. The moon shines at night. But I found out whoo, the moon does not have a light of its own. The moon simply reflects the sun. If there were no sun, the moon couldn't shine. And so the moon reflects the sun. And guess what we are? We are sun reflectors. S-O-N. If you are a child of God, if you are following Christ, you're supposed to be reflecting him in everything you do, everything you say. And you cannot, you cannot, I'm going to say this here, you cannot reflect Jesus Christ in the dark lights of Pat and the Bell concert. If you can't invite him and lift him, then how, why do you want to go to something that does not lift Jesus Christ? But I don't see nothing wrong with going to the club. I don't see nothing wrong with it. Club, and I don't see nothing wrong with drinking. I don't see nothing wrong with living any kind of way. You don't live but one time, and since you don't live but one time, you got to have fun while you can. It's not the matter what you see. You're supposed to be a sun reflector. You're supposed to be reflecting Jesus Christ in everything you do and say. Your whole life ought to be, Lord, I want to magnify you in everything I do and everything I say. And I got to be careful where I go. I got to be careful who I run with. I got to be careful because people will see Jesus see you through me but because I'm ashamed of you I'm going to hide who I really am I'm going to be a secret follower of Christ it's time out for us to be ashamed of Jesus Christ I don't know how y'all feel about it I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ I'm not ashamed of his word, and you shouldn't be ashamed of his word, because Paul said in Romans 1 and 6, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it's the power of God unto salvation. Thank God for Jesus Christ. Thank God for the word, but I'm going to tell you why. Go ahead. Keep on being ashamed if you want to. Keep on rejecting him if you want to, but I've got some news for you. There's a consequence. I said there's a consequence. I said there's a consequence in rejecting and being ashamed of Jesus Christ. Because he said this, and I believe he was talking to uh, unbelievers here. In the context of this lesson, he wasn't necessarily talking to Christians because sometimes as a child of God, I might occasionally reject, I might occasionally be ashamed of him. But he's, not, he's talking to those who've never accepted Jesus Christ. He says this, if you are ashamed of me now, if you all reject me now, there's going to come a time. I'm coming back one day. Yeah. And what he says here in Mark, the 8th chapter, verse 38, y'all look at this now. This is it. He said this. He said, Mark 8 and 38, he says this. Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation of him, shall also the son of man oh wait a minute he says son of man 88 different times in the gospels he called himself the son of man and what he was simply saying was this go ahead go if you reject me now after a while when i come back can i, can I, tell, can I tell you something don't be ashamed of him because one day he is coming back he came the first time and he's going to come the second time. When he came the first time, he came as a, as a humble baby. 
But when he come back the second time, he's coming back as the, as, as the righteous king. When he came the first time, he, he, he was born in a manger. But when he come back the second time, he'd be sitting on the kingly throne. When he came the first time, he came as the Lamb of God. But when he comes back the second time, he's coming as the Lion of Judah. When he came the first time, he came as a Savior. When he come back the second time, he's coming as a judge. When he came the first time, only a few people saw him. But when he come back the second time, every eye shall see him. And every knee shall bow. And every tongue shall confess. You got to own him now. While you have a chance, stand up for Jesus now. Don't be ashamed of him because one day he's coming back. And when he comes back, when you stand before the Lord, he's going to say, depart from me. I never knew you. You rejected me while you were here. Now, don't you, hey, 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 go to hell. I'm not, I'm not sending you to hell. But you're going because you rejected me. You rejected me while you were alive, and now you're going to hell. That's it. Are you? Are you ashamed? You got really you got to ask yourself. I'm talking to the Christians. I'm talking to the believers now. Are you ashamed of Jesus? Are you going to own him everywhere you go? Are you afraid to mention his name in, in certain venues? Don't be ashamed of him. And when you stand before him, he won't be ashamed of you. He'll say, well done. Not good and faithful servant. Enter in to the kingdom. Father, we love you. We give you glory and praise. And we thank you for your word today. We got it. We, we got the message. And Lord, there are those who have heard your word year after year. But they left here. Not really believing in you. Not really rejecting you. Not confessing you. Help us, Lord, to confess you. And not deny you. We love you. We give you glory. In the name of Jesus. We pray. Amen. Thank you for viewing the Power in the Word broadcast. If you would like more information about Pilgrim Progress Baptist Church services and ministries, please visit us at or call our church office at 501 372-4429 where our efficient church secretary will be happy to assist you. Join us again on Wednesday and or Sunday mornings at 5 a.m. Be blessed.